grand opening of the first ever, first ever USO room at the VA Medical Center. So. Before we begin today's program, I'd like to give a very uh, special welcome to a few key people. First, um, our network director, Ms. Jolene Clark, welcome. Uh, Colonel Kevin M. Frankie, Commander, 6th Medical Group, and Lieutenant Colonel Sharon uh, J. Goober, 6th uh, Medical Operations Squadron, Commander out of MacDill Air Force Base. Welcome. We have representatives from Senator Nelson's office, uh, Digner Alaveras, and Senator Rubio, Ryan Petmitra, and Congressman Bill Arrakis's office, Kristen Sellis. Welcome. And to all of the USO Central Florida board members who have joined us here today, welcome each and every one of you. At this time, I would like to ask those of you who are able to stand for the presentation of the colors by the Joint Communication Support Element Color Guard out of McGill Air Force Base, followed by the national anthem sung by Technical Sergeant Sonia Bryson and the Pledge of Allegiance by Lance Corporal Michael Summerall. So proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. All the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. It's red glare, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or oh, the land I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the invocation given by James A. Haley, Chief Chaplain Charles Smith. If you're able, let us bow our heads for the invocation. To the grand architect of the universe, we ask our blessings upon this grand opening and river cutting ceremony. We thank thee for the opportunity to provide a healing environment that would support our armed forces personnel and their family members, both active duty as well as veterans. May this environment 
continue to be a symbol of our gratitude for all of those who serve to preserve the sovereignty of our great nation. We ask that you bless those who provided the resources and the leadership, bless the refreshments, bless our souls, and bless the fellowship. Amen. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our fierce leader, um, the director of the James A. Haley VA Hospital and Clinics, uh, Ms. Kathleen Fogarty. Please welcome her. It is a great honor today. Um, we did, as we know, several of you might have been with us in September when we had a little soft opening of this room, but this is our official, and let me tell you, it looks fabulous, doesn't it? Um, it really has grown from September even to the two weeks ago. Several have asked me um, before about the USO and, and how did this come about and how did we make this happen? And um, one, I don't know how, I, we, as we call it Haley, every day we have quite a bit of tour groups that come. I have quite a lot of stars, uh, four stars that come, and one of the four stars said to me, did you ask permission? And I kind of looked at him and I said, well, no, sir, I don't think so. So my boss is here and she'd probably say, why would you ask permission to do something that's right for our veterans? Um, so that's, that's really what this was about. It was such a great opportunity um, as we were working with the USO and um, our Armed Forces Family Foundation, who I always call as Yum Foods, who had been here before um, with us and did such projects as the Internet Cafe, um, and then when the USO was moving into Tampa at the airport, uh, gave us another opportunity to, to see this come to fruition. So it's a dream of many that are in this room uh, to really understand that to heal patients, both active duty and veterans, you must heal the whole family. And this is a room that allows our families to come into what we think is a healing environment. And with healthcare, healing, and environment have to go together. And so we can't uh, thank all those that were present today to help us. Um, I have some prepared remarks, but they know that I never get on my prepared remarks. So I'll try to get there to tell you a little bit about um, why we came. So in 2005, this building um, that you're sit standing in, the Michael E. Bilaraka Spinal Cord Injury Center, um, it was built and remains the largest VA spinal cord center with 100 beds here today. 93 of those beds are occupied. They receive um, high quality active and long-term care to meet the needs of our active duty patients and our veterans. We, we just can't tell you enough about the spinal cord injury patients that are here. Um, and their stay is not a usual five to seven day stay. Um, as you know, through an acute rehabilitation, it's hundreds of days. And there is a long-term care of our spinal cord injury, which is a lifetime of care, as well as our um, spinal cord injury patients come back annually for visits that are usually a week in duration. So it's not that usual time. And that thought was not, if you're here for a long time, do you like to get that tray of food given to you every day, right? It's just kind of, um, Davis is laughing at me and Stephen's laughing at me because they've been in his beds getting that tray. There's nothing wrong with the quality of food, but it just doesn't look that well. So we had this vision uh, down the road. When you go out, you'll see the American Heroes Cafe. And we started it as a restaurant-like experience, similar to what we're going to do today as a home-like experience. And the American Heroes Cafe was dedicated just about a month ago, and it operates every day at noon. And I am pleased to tell you I haven't had one complaint. Um, I will tell you that I've had some doctors that are in the room that are a little worried of the caloric content that I am <laughs> getting because as they say to me, they can have as much as they want and the food is excellent. So we're really, we're really pleased. So this was the next comes um, the, the latest and what we were able to do and why we became this was a room um, that was outside. It was an outside courtyard. It was done for art and um, some of the outside therapies, but then we put that beautiful polytrauma building on top of it and it made this then become uh, an area where we could then do the vision that several had uh, to use a room 
that could really uh, allow our patients and their families to come in in a home-like setting. So we're kind of new. You know, one of the things that the Department of Veterans Affairs hasn't had a lot of. First walked in 31 years ago to the VA, I would see such things like a little table, maybe a coloring book. That was kind of what we did for children. And isn't it nice to see that we've really woken up to the fact that um, our patients have children and they like to play. Now, I have some other people called the infection control people that like to now tell me how now I have to keep children's toys clean and not spread infection. So we're, we're on it and we're going to get there um, of making sure that that happens. But isn't it nice to see that there's an actual area where your children can play safely and have some fun and it's okay and you're still in a hospital. The other things that we see, some of the, the furniture is not in the right um, areas, but one of the things that we saw was a place that you can get in a nice sofa or in a nice chair and have a nice warm feeling and have a movie that you want to roll up and, and see and have an enjoyable evening with your family. Now we do, what's most important is what we do here every day and that's therapy. And in rehabilitation, we have therapy. Now you may say, Ms. Fogarty, do you really think that pool is a therapy, pool as in billiards. Yes, it is, and it is a sport, right, Ms. Williams? It is a Olympic sport, so please don't make fun of saying that. <laughs> pool, billiards, and air hockey, um, we do have therapies, and they are, have been using this room since September um, with therapeutic approaches as well. So it isn't, it isn't that we used all of that health care family forces foundation that came together and came really as our partners to really make this happen and without you we would never have been successful so thank you so much uh, for coming today thank you for being such great supporters and allowing us to do the great work that we do every day at james a haley thank you You know, they say that effective leadership and actionable vision uh, starts at the top with leadership. And so I just want to publicly um, recognize Ms. Fogey for her leadership and the support that she's provided to the James A. Haley VA Hospital over the last three years. Thank you so much. So now we, the Honorable Kathy Castor is Tampa Bay Area's voice in the U.S. Congress. She served her fourth term and represents Florida's 14th congressional district, which includes Tampa, St. Petersburg, and parts of Hillsborough and Pinellas counties. Originally elected in 2006, Congresswoman Castor is the first woman to represent Hillsborough and Pinellas counties in the U.S. Congress. She focuses on issues vital to the Tampa Bay area families and businesses and is committed to building a stronger economy. She works on initiatives that creates jobs, improves schools, provides access to affordable health care, and protects consumers and the environment. Congresswoman Castor is an outspoken advocate on behalf of hardworking families, students, seniors of Tampa Bay region, and we are happy she could join us here today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Congresswoman Castor. You all know our community is a patriotic community. We are a proud community. Um, we are known far and wide for the way we treat our brave men and women in uniform. Uh, people know that this community has embraced uh, the men and women who serve at MacDill Air Force Base, whether that's Air, the Air Mobility Wing at Central Command, at Special Operations Command, or any of those partners. We're known far and wide, that from the Pentagon to overseas, for what, how we care uh, about the military families who work at MacDill. Uh, just, look, just look this past year when the Pentagon was short on funds for the Air Fest, this community stood up and funded an Air Fest uh, to ensure that the community can enjoy uh, everything MacDill has to offer. We're also uh, very proud to be home to the James Haley uh, VA Center. And we're taking care of America's heroes 
day in and day out. And oftentimes the caregivers here, whether they're the doctors, the nurses, the therapists, the folks that keep it clean, they don't get the, the respect and attention that they deserve. But this community is grateful. And you know that we, uh, we appreciate everything that happens here at the Haley. And it gives us special pride, doesn't it, that we are uh, taking care of America's most critically wounded uh, service members at the Poly Trauma Center and the Spinal Cord Center. They do so much and it is so impressive. I'm so gratified now that we have a beautiful new state-of-the-art Poly Trauma Center so that uh, all of those military service members and veterans who have faced the most difficult challenges. So it's, we are especially grateful today because the USO is now here at the best VA hospital in the country. And uh, Mr. Hansen, thank you so much for traveling down from Washington to be here. But I want to especially recognize all of the USO folks from Central Florida who have worked now to open a beautiful USO center at the Tampa International Airport, everyone's home away from home. It is a great success and a wonderful, wonderful home away from home for all of the military families that travel through uh, the Tampa Airport. And, and now to have the first USO center here at a VA hospital. Look at it, it's beautiful. You can't imagine, I can't imagine this was the out, outdoor patio. This will be, have you been outside this morning? <laughs> it's warm. So this is a, this is a great I improvement here. And uh, to have a partner uh, like Nick Peters, uh, who's from Georgia, but has given, uh, really devoted a great portion of his professional career to ensuring that families from the armed forces have that little bit extra that they need to get through the day or, or uh, the, the things that the VA and DOD just can't afford in this day and age. Uh, Nick, you've been there to make sure that we have our extras. You were a partner in the uh, USO Center at the airport. I understand you're a partner now in building a playground for the children at MacDill Air Force Base. We have a lot more families living on the base now, so those kind of things are very important. And I want to thank you for what you've done here today in making this an extra special place. <laughs> uh, and you had, you had families, and remember this was right when the war in Iraq and Afghanistan really raging. And these families uh, were coming from all over the country uh, because they knew they could get the best care here for those very serious challenges. And the families oftentimes had to just get, get up and leave their home community. And they would come here and it was a challenge. Where were they going to live? Where were they going to stay? You know, they kind of camped out in the rooms. Uh, thank goodness we had the Fisher House open since then. That's been a godsend. Uh, they would bring the children. Uh, you know, they, the rooms were close together. Sometimes you needed quiet on the hallway. Sometimes uh, you needed just a, a place for those families to go to get a little respite. Uh, we have that now. Uh, that's going to make a tremendous difference for those families. And um, I'm very grateful, grateful to all of you. Uh, for everything you do. Thank you so much. Congresswoman Castor, thank you for being here today. And on behalf of the over 90,000 men and women that we serve, thank you for your continued service to uh, our country and to the Tampa Bay area. We sincerely appreciate it. Also, on behalf of thank you for publicly recognizing the hard work of the 4,000 employees that we have here. Our commitment and our dedication to veteran goes on each and every day. Thank you for your commitment to us. He has extensive multi-unit franchise restaurant experience as the current CEO of over 310 restaurants in the Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, and IHOP brands. In addition, Mr. Peters was the former chairman and CEO of Southern California Food Service Holding Corporation, a 64-unit Wendy's franchise. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the CEO of Prometheus uh, Partners, Nick Peters. Welcome.
Well, thank you, folks. I'll make my comments brief here. Um, when the charity actually started in an interesting way, and I'll give you a little story, a little background. Um, we've partnered with the USO. Um, they've been a phenomenal partner on a number of projects through the entire Southeast. But really, our charity started because we could never repay the debt that we owe our service members. I mean, the things that you folks have done for us, we couldn't possibly return the favors and the hard work and the effort and the sacrifice of the military and their families. So really, the charity started as a charity of mine where I just put up money on an annual basis. We did one project similar to this around the Southeast. And then I met a gentleman on a plane who was um, ex-military. He kind of figured out for us how to engage the military and get approval to do projects on military bases. And then one of our general managers who ran 60 of our Taco Bell restaurants <coughs> came to us and said, can we raise money in our restaurants? And I said, what a great idea. Why didn't I think of that? Um, and what's really interesting, and this gives us a sense of the affinity in the Southeast for you folks who uh, serve our country, we raise money for the Boys and Girls Club um, as well as World Hunger in our Taco Bell restaurants. And when you think about it, we raise twice as much money for the Armed Forces Families Foundation as we do for Boys and Girls Club and World Hunger, which are great charities, but it gives you a sense of the affinity for the military. And um, one of the things in our charity we decided was to do projects like this, which were infrastructure projects. With military budget cuts, et cetera, a lot of these things wind up on the chopping block, and there isn't money to do these kinds of things that help the families and help the military service members. The other promise we made to ourselves is we would never have the charity too big that um, we couldn't support the cost of the charity outside the charity. So if people give money to the charity, every dollar goes into a project. You give us a dollar, a dollar goes into the project. We pay for the cost of the charity in our restaurant business. So when you think about it, and the reason I tell this story is there's just an incredible affinity for what you servicemen and women do for us. And we appreciate it very much. Could never repay the debt that we owe you. And we've had great partners in the USO. The Kiwanis Club obviously participated in this project. You know, we did work, as, as um, Congressman Kester mentioned, at the USO. We've done work at McDill, other work in the VA system. And again, we are just thankful and grateful that we can be involved in a project like this, and we look forward to doing a lot more things like this in the community. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peters. And while we have this opportunity, um, let's all take a moment to recognize and thank all the men and the women in the audience who have served our country. Thank you for your service. At this time, I'd like to call up Kristen Salas, who will read a letter from Congressman Bilirakis. Hopefully, as the first of many USO day rooms inside VA medical centers, this relaxing space will be a wonderful and welcomed oasis for active duty and veteran patients and their families. I am so grateful for the generosity of the Armed Forces Families Foundation, for the various community donors, and the USO volunteers who will assist with patient and family needs on a daily basis for making this resource a reality. Indeed, we in the Tampa Bay area are blessed to have a strong USO presence to help lift the spirits of our troops and their families. I look forward to seeing this wonderful facility soon. Best wishes, Congressman Bilirakis. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Our final speaker today is USO Senior Vice President John Hansen, and he and his staff received two VA Scissors Awards for finding ways to streamline processes and services. Mr. Hansen is a native of Tuscaloosa, Alabama, we won't hold that against him, <laughs> and the University of Alabama alumni, and he is an Air Force veteran who served during Vietnam. I can't imagine what you would hold against me, Roy. <laughs> I, I won't say roll tight. I'll, okay. I, I did it. <laughs> That's my, where my mother grew up. So. Uh, but thank you, Roy, for the introduction. And uh, Representative Castor, thank you for your service um, and your support of troops and veterans in this area. 
Also, thank you for serving on the USO Caucus. Um, many, most of you don't know there is a USO Caucus in the Congress. I think it may be the largest caucus in the Congress. Um, we don't ask the members to do much. We tell them where troops are going. We let them know about National Guard deployments and coming home. And we ask them to remind their constituents that troops and families deserve their support from the American people in times of war and in times of peace. And the Congresswoman has done that. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for your service. Thanks for all you do for this area. We know how important the little things are. After all, it's what we deliver at more than 160 locations around the world every day. Um, we are a friendly island in what is often a confusing sea. That's the USO, and I'm, I'm proud to, be, to represent the USO here. We have that friendly island here today. This day room isn't the largest USO center you're ever going to see, but its impact is going to be profound. Every day, as our wounded, ill, and injured troops and veterans go about their recovery process, this will be a place to rest. This will be a place to reflect about and plan for the future. It's what we do every single day. We know through our Operation Enduring Care programs that these amazing men and women and their families and their caregivers need some place away from the hospital room, away from rehabilitation facilities, a place where they can feel like they're at home. And this bright, comforting, welcoming place is that. It lifts their spirits. We know that healing is about the body and the spirit and we know about lifting spirits. I'll be honest with you, this is an experiment for us. Uh, our entire focus for 73 years, more than 73 years, has been on lifting the spirits of active duty troops and their families. This center is going to serve those needs. It'll also serve the needs of the veterans who come here and the active duty troops recovering from injuries. It's going to be their place. We'll do every can, everything we can to make this center a success. General Richard Myers, um, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, currently chairman of our Board of Governors, encouraged us to get involved with the polytrauma centers. General Myers can be very encouraging. <laughs> um, but in his, his encouragement was essential, but this wouldn't have happened. N nobody here knew we had been encouraged to do this. Nobody at USO of Central Florida knew that. We got a phone call one day, said we're going to be going to the VA Polytrauma Center. Uh, is that an okay thing to do? And we said, sure, why don't you try it? Uh, the USO of Central Florida and the ongoing leadership of its board of directors is the reason this, this place is here. That They deserve a tremendous amount of, of respect and appreciation. And, and Mo Moya chairs the board. Thank you, Mo, for everything you do. Thank you, your board, for your activities. And I'd like you to join me again in thanking the board. It, this is a great project. <laughs> I'm looking around for our logo. You'll see it later. Uh, their success depended on relationships and partnerships. The six stars in our logo represents, represent the six organizations that came together to form the USO in the early days of 1941. Since that day, we have existed because of partnership, because of collaboration. Collaboration is a core value at the USO, and our partners in this effort are really special. So thank you, Nick Peters and the Armed Forces Family Foundation for your help that made this dream a reality. And Kathleen Fogarty, the director of this hospital, um, this is our first venture with the VA. I expect it won't be our last. Thank you for the unfunded mandate. Yeah. <laughs> I, I came in as a political appointee, so I was welcome with open, welcome with open arms. <laughs> and I knew from the first day I was a temporary hire. Um, but we had a great team. Uh, Jesse Brown brought me in, and we, we had a, a great team there. And I got to see the VA up close. This doesn't surprise me. I'm glad and honored to say this doesn't surprise me. Th there are a lot of knuckleheads who will tell you different. But the kind of vision shown here is the kind of vision and the kind of leadership I came to 
expect and admire from, from VA leaders around the country. Um, so thank you for what you do to uphold that great tradition. So I'd like to thank you all for being here on this, this special day, because um, each of you is a part of this experiment. You're in this with us. When we work together on something like this, we know we'll do the very best, our troops, our veterans, their families and their caregivers can have. And that's why we all do what we do. So thank you all again for allowing me to come here. Thank you, Mr. Hansen and the USO Central Florida and the Armed Forces Family Foundation for working with us to make this a reality. I also want to pledge our support here at Haley to serve as an exemplary role model for those polytrauma centers yet to come. We're at Tampa used to being the first in many things in VA, and so we're honored to be the first VA with the USO room. A ribbon cutting, official ribbon cutting, followed by um, refreshments in the bank. So please join us. Thank you very much.